The seventh session of the National Assembly winds down after four years. Inaugurated on 5th of June 2011, the outgone Senate leader Victor Ndomaiba reveals that a total of 591 bills were introduced in the Senate and 123 passed into law, while others are at various legislative stages. Among the bills passed by the ex-lawmakers include Occupational Safety and Health Bill, Pension Reform Act Amendment, Same-Sex Marriage Prohibition Bill, and the Terrorism Prevention Act 2011, amongst others. And now that that tenure has expired, a new group of lawmakers for the hallowed chamber must be inaugurated. This starts with a process. Four principal leaders for the two chambers of the National Assembly, the Senate and the House of Representatives must be elected by fellow members. The All Progressives Congress has secured a total of 64 out of the 109 members of the upper chamber and 214 out of the 360 members for the lower legislative chamber from the elections held in April. Days before the inauguration, the ruling party, APC, conducts a mock election to choose the candidates for the principal positions in the National Assembly. Femi Bajabiamila, a former minority leader in the lower chamber, wins the mock election to stand as the Speaker of the House against his main challenger, Yakubu Dugara, while Hamed Lawan, a former chairman of the Senate Committee on Public Account, is the party's choice for the Senate President. He has the former governor of Kwara State, Bukola Saraki, as his main contender. Yakubu Dugara had staged a walkout of the mock election venue due to the party's decision. The APC leadership keep telling the public, and of course we've read it, we've watched it on television, that an election was conducted, a mock election in court, and Honorable Femi Bajabia uh, Miller got 154 votes, while Honorable Yakubu Dogara got three votes. This is a blanched lie. The exercise entirely is a fraud. The reality of the matter is that, which we've explained over and over again, we walked out of the venue. The D-Day is here. Fierce looking security personnel take over the National Assembly while a thorough search of officials go on. Journalists are prevented from entering the hallowed chamber. After a while, access is granted. Clerks are all seated, and senators elect are ready to cast their ballot for the choice of the Senate President.
The clerk calls for nominations for the election. I want to invite and allow the elect to second the motion. I rise to nominate Senator Dr. Abakar Bukola Saraki to take the chair of the Senate as President of the Senate. I so move. I second the motion ably moved by Senator Yerima Ahmed Sani, nominating this visionary and courageous leader, Senator Dr. Abubakar Bokola Saraki, to take the chair of the Senate as the Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria of the 8th Senate. I so second. Any further nominations? Any further nominations? The call for more nominations is met with silence. Though Dr. Bukola Saraki isn't the APC's choice, he gets the votes of the 57 members out of 109 expected to be present for the election. 45 of the senators are members of the opposition People's Democratic Party. The party Dr. Saraki left for the APC. Finally, he's sworn in on a post. To, at a time when a lot is being expected of us. Nigerians expect the barest minimum out of our agenda, that the new Senate and National Assembly must make laws that will enable us to renew our infrastructure, reform the oil sector, reform our security system, our judiciary process, diversify our economy, create jobs, and make doing business in Nigeria more competitive. The same process of nomination is introduced to choose a deputy Senate president. And in what many have termed a shocking move, Senator Ike Ekwerimadu of the minority opposition PDP is nominated. He gets the votes against the APC's choice, Alin Dume, and is sworn in. He returns to the position he held in the 7th Senate. 